Hello and welcome to this Online College of Coding video tutorial series. In this video, we're assembling the ultra easy version of Squirty Squid and becoming familiar with the Unity interface. Before beginning this tutorial, it's recommended you've completed the Introduction to Unity tutorials. Let's get started. This video pairs up pretty heavily with the tutorial document. The document has in depth explanations where the video is just going to show you how to assemble the Squirty Squid project in Unity. To get started, open up Unity and click New to create a new project. I'm using Unity 5.6, but more than likely this is going to work for you regardless of what version you have. Give the project the name Squirty Squid, choose your spot that you want to save the game, then you need to make sure it's a 3D game, and you can click Create Project. Now Unity is going to sit and think for a little while, but eventually the Unity Editor will pop up. This is what the Unity Editor looks like for a brand new blank project. The resources we're going to use to create this game come in a pre-packaged Unity asset package, which you should have already downloaded. You can find your asset package and drag it into this window, the project browser. Then you should see an import Unity package window pop up with a list of all the resources that are going to be imported from that package. If you want, you can scroll down and take a look, but all we need to do is make sure all the boxes are ticked and then click import. Unity is going to think for a bit more while it imports all the assets. Now our project browser has three folders in it, an imported assets folder, a prefabs folder and a scripts folder. Open the prefabs folder. The files in here are prefabricated game objects, so there's already a bit of assembling done. Click and drag the prefab called environment from the prefabs folder up into this window, the hierarchy. This is going to place it into our game and it should appear in the scene view. If you hover your mouse over the scene view and hold the right click button, you can use the W, A, S and D keys, like arrow keys, to move your view around in the scene view and get a better look at what we've just put in there. The environment prefab comes with a background image, an image of some coral and a foreground image that borders the game. You can press the play button in the middle of the screen at the top to see it all come to life. This moves us into the game view where we look at the game running. You can use the tabs to go back to the scene view and watch the game from there. To stop playing the game, click the play button again. Now we have an environment in our game, so the next thing for us to add in is the player. Just like the environment, our player has been bundled up into a prefab as well. We just need to drag the prefab from the project browser into the hierarchy. So do that now. And you can press play again to see the player come to life, sort of. Whilst we do have the player character in the game, it has no script, which means no instructions and no agenda, so it just kind of falls out of the way. Navigate to the scripts folder in the project browser and there will be a script called player. If you click and drag this script into the hierarchy, you can drop it on the player game object. We've just made a change to the player prefab, so we need to look over to the far right, the inspector window, and click the apply button to apply the change. Now you can play the game once again and use the spacebar to make the player jump. When you're not pressing the spacebar, the player still falls. That's a product of physics. But when you do press the spacebar, the script that we attach to the object is going to cause the player to react and jump. In order to stop the player from moving above the top and bottom borders of the screen, we need to add a collider component. In the project browser, navigate to the prefabs folder and select the player prefab. Then in the inspector window, click the add component button and then choose from the physics 2D section, a circle collider 2D. Tick the is trigger box to turn the collider into a trigger volume. Now we need to add colliders to the environment too. So in the project browser, click the arrow on the environment prefab to expand it. Click the coral object, then hold the control key on your keyboard and also select border top and border bottom. In the inspector, click the add component button. Now we're going to add from the physics 2D section, a box collider 2D to all three of the objects at the same time. Just like for the player, we also need to tick the is trigger box on the collider component. 
When there's a trigger collision with the player, its script is what turns off the controls and kills it. The next part of the game is the game manager. Click the create menu in the hierarchy and then choose create empty. Select the new game object, which is just called game object in the hierarchy, then right click and choose rename. Give it the name game manager and then press enter. In the project browser, navigate to the scripts folder and find the game manager script. Drag it into the hierarchy and place it on the game manager. In the inspector you should now see a game manager script attached to the object. This object is managing the game and controlling the spawning of the obstacles, which is what we have to prepare next. Navigate to the prefabs folder in the project browser and select the anemone prefab. Without deselecting the anemone prefab, navigate to the scripts folder in the project browser and drag the obstacle script into the inspector to attach it to the prefab. When making changes to a prefab like this, you don't need to click the apply button because the changes are happening directly to the prefab in the project browser and not an instance of the prefab from the hierarchy. Go back to the project browser and click the expand arrow on the anemone prefab so you can see its components. Select the anemone bottom, then hold control and select the anemone top. Now move to the inspector, click the add component button and from the physics 2D section, add a box collider 2D. Now the anemone objects will also collide with the player and cause the game to end. Before adding the score to the game, we're going to add the menu. In the project browser, from the prefabs folder, drag the menu canvas prefab into the hierarchy. Using the mouse and the arrow keys, you can zoom out to see the menu in full. Alternatively, you could just double click menu canvas in the hierarchy which is probably the quickest way to move back to the level. Double click on the environment. The size of the menu isn't really relevant to the rest of the game. It's just a side effect of the way Unity lets you create menus. The menu is automatically linked to the game manager and keeps track of the game score. You'll notice that the player is never awarded points at the moment. This is because there's no way for the game to know when to award the points. We're going to add another collider and this time onto the anemone prefab. The collider will be to detect when the player makes it through the obstacle and that will trigger the awarding of points. In the project browser, select the anemone prefab from the prefabs folder and drag it into the hierarchy. We are making changes to the prefab, but we're first creating an instance of the prefab into the scene so that we can visualize the changes as we make them. With the obstacle selected in the hierarchy, in the inspector, click the add component button and from the Physics 2D section, add a Box Collider 2D. Within the component properties, set the Box Collider to be a Trigger Collider, then set its offset on the x-axis to be 1.5, set the size on the x-axis to be 0.2, and on the y-axis, 5. As you can see, the Collider box is not actually on the obstacle, but past the obstacle to indicate the player has made it through. Click the apply button in the inspector and you can actually delete the obstacle from the hierarchy. If you select the anemone prefab in the project browser, you can double check that the changes made are indeed applied there. By pressing play, you can also see that the game has been fully assembled. So great job making it through this tutorial. Hopefully, if you like moving on to a more difficult tutorial in Unity, or maybe even trying another one like this. Be sure to also check out our Intermediate Programming Concept series if you're looking to get into C-Sharp programming. I'll see you in the next video.